Today, I'm going to be talking about Leanne Pinnock's new BBC documentary titled Leanne, Race, Pop, and Power. If you aren't aware, Leanne Pinnock is a member of Little Mix, a British girl group. As the only black member of the group, Leanne struggled with being alienated due to her skin color. She herself is half black and half white. Both of her parents are mixed. This is not the first time I've heard about a black girl in a girl group getting treated differently, as Melby of the Spice Girls and Normani of Fifth Harmony have spoken about similar experiences in the past. Before getting into the documentary itself, I'm going to give you guys some necessary context. When Leanne's documentary was initially announced in 2019, we were told the title would be Colorism and Race. A lot of black people were perplexed by this as Leanne herself was a light-skinned mixed black woman. Since colorism affects dark-skinned black women the most, people did not like the idea that someone who wasn't a dark-skinned black woman would be taking up space on such a topic and quite frankly, many didn't believe Leanne would have the range. It didn't help that Leanne's fiance, who was half black himself, had been called out for making a colorist comment against black women. And I quote, Black girls with red lipstick is like burnt toast with jam on it. Hashtag leave it, yeah. Reminds me of when ASAP Rocky said dark skinned girls shouldn't wear red lipstick in 2013, called the black women who called him out for it sensitive. Then Rihanna proceeded to publicly date him despite having a beauty brand that markets red lipstick to dark skinned black women. Also including him in campaigns for the beauty brand, she of course faced corresponding backlash. Going back to Leanne, it wasn't looking good that the light-skinned mixed girl with the colorist fiancé was going to be making a documentary about colorism. Personally, as a fan, I was wary, but I was hopeful she wouldn't drop the ball, especially after the video she posted on Instagram following George Floyd's life being taken. Hi everyone, I hope everyone is okay. Um, I just kind of wanted to do a video with everything that's going on in the world right now. Um, firstly, I just want to send my condolences to George Floyd's family and all the other families that have lost someone due to police brutality and racism. So I've written some words down because I feel like when I speak about my experiences or race in general, I get really sad and I get upset and I can never really say everything that I want to say. So I feel like I've written it down and I just want to share this with you guys. So, okay. Last year, I decided to open up about being one of four girls in Little Mix and how my race imprinted my experiences. From that interview, some people sympathised, some said nothing, but one thing that I took from that experience is the world did not care enough about race. Since then, I have tried to use my platform to raise awareness of matters such as racism. At this moment, I feel for the first time in my life, racism is the topic of conversation we have the world's attention. We cannot see this as a moment. This has to be a movement until the system designed to oppress us is no more and we are seen as equals to our white counterparts. This is not something that can happen overnight. Black people have been oppressed for over 400 years. 400 years later, we are seeing still our black brothers and sisters being shot down and treated with less regard than everyone else. My parents are both mixed race. Both my grandfathers came to England with the Windrush generation and both married white women in a time where interracial relationships was extremely frowned upon. Growing up, me and my sisters never saw race being a limitation on what we wanted to achieve. Because if our grandparents can raise mixed race children in the 60s, we could do anything. One thing we were doing was sleeping on racism. Too often, black people are reminded how far we have come as opposed to how far we can go. In doing this, we sleep on racism. Think about it. Do you ever hear white people having to be thankful about how far they have come as a race? There comes a point in every black human's life, no matter how much money you have or what you have achieved, you realise racism does not exclude you. Nine years ago, after joining Little Mix, I had the biggest awakening of my life. When we were filming Wings, we worked with Frank Gatson. He said to me, you're the black girl, you have to work 10 times harder. Never in my life had someone told me that I would need to work harder because of my race. Later on, what Frank Gatson said made sense. 
I learned that the dream of being in the biggest girl band in the world came with its flaws and consequences. Consequences such as knowing about the existing underlying racism in the creative industries. You learn to understand you can't be seen to be too loud or too opinionated, otherwise you're deemed a diva or aggressive. You learn that by walking into a room, you are deemed unapproachable or offish before anyone has even approached you. You learn that by voicing your opinion about the lack of diversity within the industry is like smashing your head against a brick wall. So at events, ceremonies, you learn to take great comfort from rare moments when you meet black creatives who understand this feeling or misplacement that you have inside. So for that moment, the dream is alive. And then just like that, reality hits you. My reality was feeling lonely while touring to predominantly white countries. I sing to fans who don't see me or hear me or cheer me on. My reality is feeling anxious before fan events and signings because I always feel like I'm the least favoured. My reality is constantly feeling like I have to work 10 times harder and longer to mark my place in the group because my talent alone isn't enough. My reality is wanting to see other artists who I know are so talented but will never get the opportunities, opportunities I have had because to the industry they are not marketable but they will get behind someone else with the aspects of black culture the world wants to see, but leave behind the aspects they feel make them unmarketable. My reality is all the times I have felt invisible within my group, part of me is fully aware that my experience would have been even harder to cope with had I been dark skinned. Our reality is no matter how far you think you have come, racism exists. It exists in sports, in the creative industries, in politics and policies, in the streets and in the hearts of racist individuals. We are no longer in a position where we need to be quiet on this matter. So let's all continue to speak up on racism and keep this movement going. Thank you. I was especially happy when the revised title of the documentary was released, Race, Pop and Power, as that seemed much more fitting for her situation. Being a black girl in the pop industry, I do feel like I have a responsibility to speak out. She knows that she she is going to get backlash off this. She just said, you're the black girl, you're going to have to work ten times harder. They told me, you need to bleach your skin because you won't sell any records. We were taught that opinion didn't matter. Yeah. Like, we are powerful. Back in 2019, Leanne opened up in a Glamour interview about dealing with racist trolls. How have you dealt with trolls online? I'm not going to lie, um, the first three years of being in the group, I would look for it. I would search Leanne for, oh my God. Oh, babes. Come here, come here. Oh, hon. Sorry. Oh, fake. No, it's not. <laughs> it's amazing what you're doing. Game face. We are here. We are here. Right. You're amazing. Thanks. So don't worry. We're all here to support you. Thank you. I would, look through Twitter and I would search Leanne from Little Mix, the black girl in Little Mix. I would literally put those in my search engines. Um, and just to see the comments, mm. like, oh, it, it's honestly, it's, I regret doing that so much, but I mean, I'm here now and I just feel so much stronger. Jessie, who left Little Mix last December, released a documentary on her struggles while in the group in 2019, but hers focused on fat phobia and cyberbullying. Jessie sat down with Glamour as well that same year to discuss her mental health, and it was the same man who had spoken to Leanne, Josh Smith, that conducted the interview. During the talk, Josh asked Jessie if she had ever spoken to Leanne about her struggles with racism. Because I think as well, I've interviewed Leanne about a similar thing mm -hmm. that she went through, so she yeah. was searching out yeah. the online hate. Mm -hmm. Did you guys ever discuss it? No. I knew it affected Leanne, though. Yeah. Um, and she's, she's better at dealing with it than me, mm. yeah. Well, it's obvious Jessie was far from correct as it was recently revealed that Leanne cried almost every night on their last tour. She told BBC, I remember coming off stage and crying most nights and just being like, why do I feel like this? Why do I feel like no one likes me? I might as well not be on the stage. Sad that Leanne showed support for Jessie, but Jessie couldn't do the same for her. 
I guess she was too busy blackfishing with her locks in tow while she records and posts her friends yelling the n-word from the top of their lungs. The lip fillers will dissolve and the tan washes off, while Leanne has to deal with being black 365 days a year, dealing with racist harassment for almost a decade. In June of last year, Leanne expressed in an interview that when she spoke up about her experiences with racism in 2019, she felt no one had listened. Leanne's documentary was finally released on May 13th of this year. Now that I've finished giving you guys some context, let's get into the documentary itself. At the beginning of the documentary, Leanne talks about feeling invisible while in the group and people always telling her it was in her head, essentially gaslighting her. She also makes an important point about how dark-skinned black women are discriminated against by the world and she wonders if she herself were a few shades darker, would she be in her current successful position today? I'm glad she made this point at the beginning of the documentary as she not only acknowledges her own privilege but also sheds light on the experience of those darker than her. She also mentioned that she wanted the activism for black lives to be more than just a black square, and I think that's a point a lot of us cannot stress enough. So many people posted those black squares last summer and did nothing else after that. Some donated last summer, but continued to perpetuate the very things we're supposed to be fighting against. All of the performative activism isn't getting anything done. After the intro to the movie, Leanne starts talking about being alienated when it came to interactions with fans. For example, Little Mix was doing a radio tour. Leanne was the first person to get off the plane at one destination, and she said there was a group of fans waiting outside for the group, so she went up to them, and they walked right past her and went to the other girls. It was very weird because it was almost as if she was invisible, and things like that where she would get ignored or left out kept on happening. When she opened up to family about this, they would tell her, you're in the biggest girl group in the world. You have nothing to complain about continuing to gaslight her. So because people kept telling her, it's in your head, you have nothing to worry about, she internalized what was happening and figured that she was the one at fault for the way fans were treating her. She said she was constantly pushing herself to do better, thinking that if she worked on her vocals, brought more energy on stage, and spoke more, that she would be treated the same way as her bandmates. So she did that, and of course, it didn't work. When someone doesn't like you because of your race, it doesn't matter how hard you work or how good you are they're still not going to like you. So I can only imagine poor Leanne thinking she is the one slacking when in reality, fans are just ignoring her because she's black. That's literally it. Leanne then said how one time while on tour, the group had performed in Sao Paulo, Brazil. When she mentioned this, I was taken aback because I was like, did the Brazil fans ignore her too? I would expect the opposite because she has that biracial look that they love over there. Turns out from the moment the group got off the plane, Fans were chanting her name. When they got on stage, the same thing happened. Oh my Leanne said she had never experienced anything like that before during her eight years of Little Mix. She had never been shown that much love and had never felt so accepted before. She also mentioned that there were so many black people in the crowd, which is unsurprising since after Nigeria, Brazil has the world's second largest black population. It was from Little Mix's tour stop in Brazil that made Leanne realize maybe it was her race that was playing a factor into how fans were treating her. I remember last year, March 2020, when this tour day actually happened. There was a video of Leanne in Brazil crying while a black fan was telling her how much he loved her. All the girls and I love her so much, man. So, 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 so much. Okay, stop. Yes, girl. Oh, queen. When I saw the video back then, I remember thinking she looked sad, and now I understand why. Imagine being in her group, having to wait eight years to finally feel acknowledged by your fan base. I'm glad she got to tour in a black nominated country so she could feel fully embraced like the other girls get to feel all the time. So after the part about Brazil, we get to see Leanne with her parents. I'm going to say this now, a good chunk of the documentary was watching someone learn about racism for the first time, and that's someone being Leanne. I had to pause a good number of times because it was frustrating as someone who was forced to deal with anti-blackness since I was three years old. 
But I understand Leanne only had one run in with racism when she was younger. And after seeing her parents and how they react to conversations about race, I can see why she is only just now learning about these issues. As I mentioned earlier, both of Leanne's parents are mixed. They both grew up with a black father and a white mother. When Leanne asks both of them if they identify as black, the mom says yes, but the dad says, I identify as John Pinnock. I mean, you do identify as black? I mean, you don't like to be identified. I like to identify myself as John Pinnock. (laughs) (laughs) This is a huge red flag because that tells me this man is refusing to acknowledge his racial identity as a factor in his life. In a different situation, this would be perfectly fine. You can do as you wish. But when your daughter is struggling with issues that concern racism, you can't be saying, I identify as John Pinnock, because it's very dismissive to the subject at hand. I know black. Negro, nunca, nunca. I know ne- no, no, nunca. I know black. I'm like, no, you black. No, no, no. I know black. I identify myself as John Pinnock. I go, I know, but you're black. No, 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 papi. I know black. No, no, black, black, black. 